fear, uncertainty. You know, life gets messy and we wonder how in the world can we choose courage in the midst of all that life throws at us. Well, this last year, I have had the blessing and privilege of interviewing some amazing uh, people with incredible stories of courage. And my gift to you this Christmas is a year's worth of contagious courage wrapped up into this 10 minute video. Take a look. Do you have what it takes to be a champion? Uh, I actually wrestled with what does it look like to be a champion? Mm. What does it look like to not simply win medals, but to be a champion? Because I think those are two different things. Because mm. I think you can be a champion in terms of character right. and how you yes. carry yourself. Yes. And not win medals. Yes. And you can also win medals and not be a champion in terms of character. Yes. So you take this passion of faith and that relationship with God, but then I also have this passion of sport. But what do you do when those two things kind of like collide or butt heads? Yes. Like, okay, what does it look like to move forward in faith in the situation? Um, faith in God, faith in myself, faith in my dreams. Mm -hmm. What does it look like to not lose hope? Uh, spreading the message of hope is truly about showing love and meeting a practical need and and Caden and Cammy have done just that. Yeah, and something I want to add on to that is God doesn't just speak to uh, the pastors and to the oh, yeah. you know all that. the teachers, right? God speaks to everyone and he doesn't just speak on mission trips. As we said before, God is there on mission trips. God's also here in Canada. Yes. Yes. God is here in in this home. God is here yes. uh, everywhere. God's here all throughout our day. And he wants to speak mm -hmm. to us, but we just have to just reach out and ask him. Bullying, it comes in all different forms and happens for many different reasons. But you know what? They're always inappropriate and always so very wrong. My name is Megan Welk and I am a victim of bullying. Even to this day, I um, still struggle with the idea of um, not being enough, not being enough for my husband, not being enough for my family, not being enough for God. Um, and just recently I got this tattoo that says I am enough and I got it on my wrist uh, to remind me every single day that um, Jesus died on the cross so that um, we can be enough for him and no matter what we do, he is always there if we ask him to be there. A life-altering disability, infidelity, and unconditional love. Today, you will hear a story of determination, hurt, and healing. Today, you will hear about how one man's story to stay altered the course of my life. In our lives, we needed to have God as a foundation because without that, we wouldn't have been able to continue doing some of these other things. They would have fallen apart over time. You have to have a willingness to be committed and a willingness to work through struggles. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's tough, and but it is worth it. Through all of what has happened, we have developed a deeper dependency on the Lord that I would we would never change for anything. So what is it that uh, you would like to tell someone who is watching that has been through abortion or maybe is considering abortion? I want everyone to know through Unborn Untold is that God is a God of first chances, second chances, <laughs> third chances, and as many chances as we that. need. Being raised by a single mom and becoming a single mom herself at age 16 my next guest knows what it is to face fear and choose courage. So the first decision that we had to make was whether we were going to keep this baby. Whether the baby was going to live was never an option for us. Hmm. We always knew that abortion was not going to be an option. And now you have a, a husband and two more children. Yes. And, but like a charity? Uh, to help single moms? Like, how did that even begin? And like, cause there's a lot of single moms out there that don't say, hey, I want to start a charity. Right, so I actually didn't begin it at all, even as a charity. I began it as a night to offer prayer outside of the church. Oh, okay. I thought that was really important um, for people that might not go to church or might have been hurt by somebody in the church and sort of have a pulled back feeling towards going to church. 
I still thought that being able to experience God was really important. And in fact, the word kaleo is a Greek word that means to call or invite. Because ah. I believe that everybody is invited. Lan began to lose his mobility and all that that comes with ALS. And through all of this, I just rested in God and he showed me he showed me many times. I know at one point I was praying and like it came to me, you're going to be alone again. And I said, no, I'm not going to be alone because God's with me. Mm. It was one of my fears, but I'm never, ever alone. Mood disorders, depression, bipolar 2, and cancer? My next guest prescription for depression will leave you with no other side effects than a sore gut from laughing and renewed hope. Uh, tell me how it is that you uh, incorporated humor. Uh, I've heard you speak, and you're yeah. very funny, very charismatic. And but how you know did what? that even? Start? I never even. I didn't even realize I was talking funny. I, <laughs> you know, I no. talked about uh, real stuff. Yes. I would, and I would say I'm overweight. I'm mentally ill. And I'm a bit pathetic. <laughs> but God has used me. I think the biggest message I want to get across yes. is that very thing. You love Jesus, juxtaposed with, I want to die, mm. I feel awful. And I always thought you had to get rid of one to have the other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you're depressed, you've left Jesus out of it. If you love Jesus, that'll be gone. It's not true. Yeah, yeah. We can be broken and crippled and not know what to do and be feeling depressed and overwhelmed at the same time as we're saying, my Jesus, I love you. Does chronic illness add value to your life? It's um, a little bit more difficult today. I'm in a lot of pain um, over here and in my ear and my jaw. I think what chronic illness has given me is much more self-awareness and insight into really who I am and who God has created me to be. Uh, my journey looks different than yours, but we all have a story. I think acknowledging that things are not okay is the, your first step and then where you go from there and choosing where you put your focus on. For my next guest, the phrase I have cancer came like you would expect, completely out of nowhere and catching them off guard. How has this diagnosis affected your faith? Uh, I'd say the word faith is mm. a key word and Sometimes when people hear the word faith, immediately they think, well, I don't have enough faith. Do I have enough faith? They ask themselves mm -hmm. that question. And, and so uh, I've, we found that it's not really so how big your faith is, it's where you put your faith. How did you overcome doubt and fears? We were sitting on the deck and I had this compelling impression of you're going to be okay. It wasn't something I heard audibly, mm. but it felt like an audible in my spirit. And at the time I thought, well, what do you mean I'm going to be okay? Is something going to happen to Bob mm. that when we go back, I'm going to face something and yes, I'm going to be okay. I didn't know mm. what God was trying to tell me. So when the phone call came and I got the diagnosis, it was then that the spirit, I really felt the spirit say to me, you're going to be okay. We know that depression and mental illness they're no respecter of persons. You know, when I was on the psychiatric ward, I was like, what am I doing here, God? How much longer do I have to go through this? Mm. But it's for somebody else. Yes, somebody else. Watching. Somebody else that is watching, yeah. that is going through mental yeah. illness, somebody that's going through depression. Yeah. I want you to know that it's not over until it God over. said it's over. Yeah. What? Uh, do it, do it. I sing because I'm happy. Yes. And I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Oh, wow. And that concludes another year of Contagious Courage. And I believe I can speak for all my guests when I say, not to us, O oh Lord, not to us, but to you and your name goes all the honor and glory for his unfailing love and faithfulness. Have a very Merry Christmas and I'll see you in January.